This is Level Up Success Podcast with Neff and Truth. Well, truck was paid off, so all my overhead was paid for, even putting 10% aside for maintenance. I was clearing like 17, 18. So I'm yeah. like, oh, this shit is bread. That's not bad. You know what I'm saying? And that's just one guy. So I was like, all right, it's cool. Then all of a sudden, the crash dummy started happening. This motherfucker was <laughs> crashing into everything, bro. Yeah. No, he, he wasn't like paying attention. He had rear end of the car. So I'm like, dude, like the cool thing about the car was when he rear ended the car, I told him, yo, ask him if we could pay him cash. So we don't put an insurance. So the lady was cool. We was like, yo, I'll, I'll cut you a check. Like, give me information. I'll cut you a check. I'll pay for all the damage. Or send it to the mechanic shop and have him call me and I'll pay with my card. Yeah. So she did that. We took care of that. Then one day, this dude was driving down the highway. I don't know what the fuck happened, but one of the tires came off. Mm. These are 18-wheelers. Oh, so, I mean, it happens. This yeah, wasn't his yeah. fault, but one of the tires came off of the, of the truck. This is where people don't, you put drivers in there, you have to make sure your driver is doing, they call it a PMI, your pre-trip inspection. Yeah. So he wasn't doing a pre-trip. Tire flew off. Fucking truck got damaged. Thing flew off. So it got to the point was, oh, and at this time, when I got the truck, I had brought on a partner. Mm. So this is, next thing about partnerships is everybody is listening is when you're doing a partnership, it's cool, but y'all got to make sure, are you my partner or are you my investor? Mm, okay. There's a difference. On, yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Because I, I'm going to yeah. talk about this. And this is why I went in the second time around without a partner. The problem I, didn't, the problem I had with the partnership was one, I didn't differentiate friendship and business. Yeah. That's me learning. Like I said, life is about learning. Mm-hmm. So I didn't learn about the friendship in the business. So me and him was going to, uh, what's this shit called? BBQs. Mm. We would swipe the business card. Plenty of yeah. business lunches. Okay. Chilling. Having drinks. Talking about how we're going to expand the business. We even went out. I had known this guy. He's he's um one of the Burger King's regional operations manager of whatever. He has some big ass fucking title. Okay. But all the guy does is he goes search out real estate properties for Burger King. Okay. okay. But he's a millionaire. The guy is fucking worth millions and millions of dollars. Okay. So he does he goes out and he does real estate. He's also a real estate investor himself. And he does commercial real estate. But he does with the SBA, the Small Business Association. Okay, yeah. I went through the Small Business Association to get mentorship. I always tell everybody, find mentorship in anything you're trying to do. Yes. Get a mentor. Yeah. Get a fucking mentor. That's a great advice right there. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I have a mentor to this day. And I have a mentor. Like, he built and sold trucking companies 10 times over. So, we were just bullshitting, bro. Like, it wasn't. And then when it came down to the actual business, I found out that I was on an island by myself. Mm. When it, de- when it comes to dealing with the driver, when it came to doing all the maintenance, when it came to doing all the legalities, when it came to dealing... Because when you're doing trucking and you're going into the trucking business, you and the federal government becomes best friends. Yeah. <laughs> because they have something called DOT, Department of Transportation. Mm, yeah, they yeah. run the trucking industry. So if they pass a law today... They could pass a law today that could shut down your whole operation based on what you do. Yeah, yeah. So you got to do that's these cool. are the, that's the principle. And you got to follow everything the principle says. That's crazy. So I had to make sure all our DOT regulations was on point, mm-hmm. meaning our paperwork, because that's DOT. They just care about the paperwork and making sure you're legal. Okay. They control everything. So how was your, how was your friend um, or how was your partner uh, contributing to that? He wasn't. That was the problem. Like, he was, he did, he was probably overviewing everything. So, anything I had, anything I did, like, he did a couple of the admin, administration stuff, but I still had to do the legwork, like the research, finding out everything and all that. But, go ahead. No, do you think that the reason he wasn't doing his part because he didn't have knowledge about the business or it was just... No, because he was a dispatcher from a trucking company. Oh, yeah. 
So it was. I, I, yeah. I forgot to even. I forgot to even mention that part. He was yeah, a trucking yeah, okay. dispatcher, so he was the guy I worked with at the job. Oh, so okay. he dispatched and everything, but he was cool. I mean, we end up selling the truck because it was just too much to handle. I end up going back to work for JB Hunt. Okay. And then one of the guys there, his cousin worked in the ports, and he told me, "Hey, why don't you think about going into the ports?" He was like, "You make the same amount of money as being an owner operator." Yeah. So, so wait be, before you continue. Um, one thing I want the audience to see is how he just um said he had a business. He fell off of the business, right? Because yep. of because of a uh, you know partnership issues. The business failed. Yeah, I could just be honest. Exactly. The business, the so, business failed. So so he so it was like a stumble. So did did it make you quit? What as. It, I mean, yeah, you could say I quit yeah. technically, but it wasn't a passion that I lost. You, so if that yeah. makes sense to everybody, oh, yeah, I yeah, always, yeah. No, it makes I always sense. knew yeah. in my mind I wanted to do a trucking company, but I figured out I did it the wrong way. Yeah. So it didn't stop me from always having it because anybody that knows me over the years, all I did was talk about trucking. Even your cousin June, yeah, he yeah. knows me. Everybody knows Shout that's what I June. did. I did <laughs> trucking. I did a lot of trucking, everything I did. Even now, I figured it was my calling to be in the transportation industry, whether it be as a as a business owner or a laborer. Or I mean, I worked in all aspects. I'm working in the shipping aspect now. I've been there for 10 years yeah. in the longshoreman, which is very well because people ask me all the time, well, why are you starting a business if you're making six figures already and you're already doing well enough that you don't even need to do a business? I, I don't know, maybe it's some part of insanity. You know, people are like, yo, <laughs> this nigga's crazy. Like, I'm making good, I make great money with my with my current job. I don't really do that much. Oh, I do a lot. I work a lot of hours. I don't say, I can't say I don't do that much. I do a lot. I work about six, seven days a week. Wow. I do about, I do about 12 hours a day, physical, but sometimes 18. Um, I don't see my family. I don't see my kids. And these are some of the sacrifices you have to make to achieve goals. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, you also have to have a good foundation to achieve these goals because you might not have the perfect partner at home that's willing to see what you're trying to do mm-hmm. or your kids might not have the understanding to see what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, all this time, I'm still in the Bronx because I'm working this great job but living in the Bronx. Mm. I started that trucking business. I'm still living in the Bronx. And I was failing to realize, like, you know, I got to really get my home base together. So what I did was I got off the trucking entrepreneur thing for a while. Um, That was in 2010. I got the job in 2013, 2014. Okay. And then I just started working, grinding, grinding. I went through a lot of trials and tribulations with any job. It's a laboring job. It's a union job. And if anybody know about union jobs, you have to build your seniority up. Yeah. The more your seniority, the better the job gets, the more money you start making and all that. So it took me about five years in the industry to really reap in the benefits and okay. starting to see real money. And then once I started seeing real money, I had to figure out what I want to do with this money. And this is sometimes where we lack in our community financial education. Yes. And that, that's where people get comfortable, like on that was say earlier. That mm-hmm. part I don't understand. There's people that get comfortable, especially when you're making more money than you ever thought yeah. you were going to make. This is, yeah. Working my job was probably the most money I ever made in my life. Yeah. The most money I ever made in my life. And it changed my family's life. And it also changed. It changed my family's life. It changed the people around me because I noticed like things started changing. Like um, I felt like I didn't change as a person. But you always any what I tell people is even people that's trying to find a success and you hear on the Instagram all oh, my haters or oh, friends act funny and this is that. With any form of success that you get, whether it be working, whether it be spiritually, mentally, physically. People are going to change around you, but you also are changing. Yes. Yeah. The I core agree. person is the same, but you have to change to be successful. So some people are like, oh, I didn't change. Why people change? Yes, you did change because you have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you feel. You have to change the way you eat. If you want to get in shape, you're not just going to get in shape by just sitting there. 
Yeah, exactly. You got to go to the gym. You got to eat right. You got to drink water. You probably got to get a physical. Make sure your insides are good. Yeah, you got to go through a process. You got to go through the process. So everything is a form of change. And sometimes people be like, oh, the people around you are going to change when you see success. Yes, they are. Because Mm -hmm. not everybody's supposed to be around you when you see success. It's just the reality of life because you're on a different frequency. No disrespect to the people you have around you, even your family. No disrespect to family members, no disrespect to friends, associates. But once you want to reach a certain goal in your life, you have to seek out those people that are doing what you want to do. There you go. And yep. it, you have to put all egos aside. You have to put everything aside. And sometimes as a friend, because I have, my biggest thing is I love bigging up people. I love seeing people doing good. I love doing that. My wife hates it sometimes because she says she's like a nigga, you sucking him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh. why are you sweating him? Why are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like you yeah, need yeah. to chill. But I'm just genuinely happy to see people do good. But not only that, it's it's also a maneuver. Yeah. Because if you're doing something powerful, like you into real estate, I might run into some money right. I might not really have the financial knowledge to what to do with this money but I know you're making power moves and you're in my circle yeah exactly so I'm gonna be like yo what should I do with this you might have been looking for somebody to hit you You might have a deal but you don't have the down payment I got the down payment money what's Mm -hmm. up let's do this yeah, no, and that's, 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 where, is. that's yeah. where we have to learn like you see the Jewish community do it you see other communities do it that's where we have to learn like as a people even Spanish, but even Spanish people help each other out. Black, we got to learn how to, like you said earlier, stop being in competition with each other and learn how to like, yo, let's help him reach his goal. Mm-hmm. And then instead of hating or being jealous or envious, because you might have people that are silently jealous. And that's the one that's that's the most heartbreaking. That's the most heartbreaking feeling that's because the worst one. I yeah. had friends that was maybe I don't know but people like oh your friend was jealous I don't think nobody was ever jealous of me and I'm not gonna think people are jealous of me because I don't feel that way yeah. I just feel like my path and my vision wasn't on their same path of vision you know what I'm saying and that's how I look at life so back to um. so I went to work for the longshoreman yeah. I've been working stacking bread then I had a guy he was a real estate investor he was like yo Craig how are you making this money your family's still living in the hood <laughs> like like he was like like nigga like what are you doing my g like my brother what are you doing like he was like i was like he was like yo he's like your family's still living in the hood what, what are you doing it's a, it's, yeah, it's, like i say it's our mindset we don't even know that's the thing yeah like, that, that's one of the reasons i came to real estate because I, I had a good job making good money and i was the only person that had their own house their own property so that's what's missing our community. Yeah. That's why our community is so low. Yeah, but you know what? And I'm going to keep it. This might sound kind of crazy, but I love the hood. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love my hood. I love being in my hood. I love the I love the fact that you go outside and have a conversation with people. You know, you see your boy outside. Y'all stop and chop it up when he get out of work. Yeah. No, and that that's and that's that's pretty dope. And I, I like I feel the same way. Like I, I, I like I like visiting, you know, like my old friends, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like you know, just to see how they doing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and, and and I get I get very like excited when I see somebody that's doing something positive or, or they're doing something great, you know, like yeah, yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I had yeah. a three bedroom apartment, two bathroom in the Bronx. I live good. I live in probably one of the rougher neighborhoods. You know my hood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably the one of the rougher neighborhoods in the Bronx. The benefit is that I knew all the knuckleheads, mm-hmm, so yeah. I didn't have to worry about that aspect of life. I'm not no gang member. I'm not no drug dealer, but I know, I know of people. Of yeah, that's you know what I'm is. saying. And I grew up with such people. And to me, I knew them before they was doing the knucklehead shit. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm not gonna look at them for what they do. I'm gonna look at them for who they are. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I always live my life. And I just love the hood. And then I I even ignored that dude's advice. You know what really made me move out the Bronx? And this is just gonna sound funny. No fucking parking, bro. Yeah. 
<laughs> Yo, Bro, I moved that, out that's the like Bronx. a major reason for a lot of people. Yo, yeah. I moved out the Bronx because there was no <laughs> fucking parking, my G. It wasn't even because I didn't want to leave the hood. My son went to Cardinal Hayes High School too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was planning my daughter to probably go to one of the Catholic high schools. I left the hood because I couldn't find no fucking parking. I woke up one. I can't. I, I worked, live at Yankee Stadium. I used to wait for the game to be over. Yeah. For like three hours. Yeah. Oh, oh. You know, I wait three hours for the game to be over or I park at eight blocks away yeah. and walk home. Yeah. You know how crazy it is to have a car Bruh. and park at eight blocks? Bruh, I used to get home. I work overnights. I would get home sometimes because in the, in the ports, you work by ship hours. Yeah. So whatever time the ship, you know what time you start, but you never know what time you finish. That's the same thing with trucking. Trucking, you know what time you start. Sometimes you never know what time yeah, you finish. Yeah. No, I mean, it is like that with a lot of businesses. I mean, yeah. it, happens, it happens to me as well. Yeah, so I was just like, you know, I uh, couldn't find parking, and I told I told the wife I said, you know what, we got to get out this hood because I can't I can't I slept I literally slept in my car a few nights in front of my building, so I can't even go upstairs no, to you... sleep in my bed because I can't find no fucking parking. <laughs> yeah, dog. No parking in the Bronx is bad. Yo, so I was like, yo, fuck this, we got to get out of here. Grind for like six months, stack as much money as I can. The market was still decent, and I I we ended up buying a house. So we moved to Linden. So we lived in this house. This is in 2019. We bought the house. Okay. So I'm fast forwarding. I spent from 2014 to, to five years. I was a loan showman doing my thing. Fast forward. Fast forward. 2019, we, I decided to get the fuck out the Bronx because I couldn't find parking. Not because was, niggas was shooting. Not yeah. because it was violent. Not because it was crazy. Because I couldn't find parking. And we ended up buying a, a wonderful house okay. in Linden, New Jersey. So then we, we was doing well. But what I told, what I started trying to figure out was, and this is crazy because I listen to The Breakfast Club a lot. And I heard DJ Envy say, um, I have investments that pay for my toys. So I wanted like a luxury car. So I... I'm like, yo, what can I figure out? What investment can I do? Yeah. That it doesn't mess with my work money. I'm still like, if you hear me in the talking about this, I'm still working a nine to five, but exactly, still making yeah. other power moves. So all you hear on the Instagram is people telling you to quit your job, quit your job. My job allowed me to make these power moves because you need money to make money. Exactly. Yeah. No, like everybody sense. wanna ask you, yo, let me hold 10 grand so I can start this business. Go earn your 10 grand. Start your business and let people see your business growing and want to invest in your business. Exactly. Yeah. People are doing it backwards. They want to ask you for a handout first instead of go grind. Start. Let that one person that might believe in you see that you're willing to take the time out and work as hard as you want to be successful. And then they're like, you know what? Let me throw this dude some money. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. get what I'm saying? So that's that was that was that was. The, the 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 thing when I heard DJ Envy say yo he has investments paying for his toys, I was like yo I gotta scratch my head. And I love it. DJ Envy is doing like a thing to help his community. A lot of people don't know. Yeah. So could sell. Yeah. So I started thinking about that. Okay. I, I, I gotta step up for a second. Wait. All right. No, you're yeah, yeah. So I started thinking about that, and I'm just like yo, this dude got investments and he got little things doing. Let me figure out what the fuck I want to do. So, I always talked about the trucking. So, then they had this one dude, Alex Good Energy. He's on Instagram. Okay. And he started talking about trucking again. But most of the shit he talked about, I already knew because I did it. I did most of the stuff he did. But then he was just like, just hearing people talk about the trucking game, trucking game, trucking game. And I always wanted to do trucking game again. But I, the thing with the trucking game was, when I was scratching my head with it, was I had PTSD with the whole partnership and me starting the trucking thing. Yeah. And then I was, I was like, damn, the business failed the first time. We put some money in. I put a lot of my savings into it. And I'm like, yo, am I willing to do that again? And I already had some nice, I had a nice little nest egg. I had the house. I had the cars. You know, I was doing well with just a job. But I also know that if you want to reach another level, you need at least multiple streams of income. So okay. I started I started trying to figure out, should I get back into the trucking game again? 
until finally one day we had this thing called COVID. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the COVID, that, shit, that COVID the co- shit. The COVID <laughs> shit hit like a motherfucker. And prior to COVID, before it really hit the fan, the same year of COVID was what? Uh, 2020, right? That's yeah. when 2020. Yeah, 20 in March. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like I mean, 2020. Yeah, that's, like, when it, that's when it was really like strong because it really started announcing it in March. February. So really strong yeah. in March. So yeah. in, I had tore my meniscus. And when I tore my meniscus, I tore my meniscus in March, like right before COVID went really crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was going through the whole recovery. And then I was just like, I, I took some extra time off from work. But when I took off time from work, the money I was making a week, you don't make that same money when you're on disability. Yeah. Your money gets cut in like a third. So I'm just like, wait a minute. No, I had I had savings, so yeah. I wasn't really worried. Like I had I had some money stored for a rainy day, but if it if it rains, it drizzles, and then it becomes a thunderstorm, and then it becomes a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Then that rainy day ain't a rainy day. I had money saved for a rainy day. I didn't have money saved for a thunderstorm or a fucking hurricane. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm just looking at my savings starting to dwindle away, and I'm just like, yo, bro, this is my only income. Now my wife worked. You know what I'm saying? She was holding it down too. But I was really the one that was the breadwinner. So I'm just like, yo, I ain't got no money coming in. So I told her, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, I think I want to get back into trucking. Cause I was like, yo, at least if we had a truck and a driver, we would have had money coming in right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the time I was off from work and I took the extended disability, I could have been jumping in a truck driver for myself making money. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm just like, damn, I could have been making money all this time and I and I it wouldn't have felt off and I could have probably even milked my job and told him, Yo, my knee still fucking hurts. Like I still can't come <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah. And probably extended that shit for another three more months. Long story, I said, you know what? I'm about to buy another fucking truck. She was like, You sure? I was like, Yeah, but I'm gonna do it different this time. I'm not gonna get no partners. I'm gonna do the shit on my own and I'm gonna figure it out. When they, they have. Wait, wait, before you continue, I have a question. Like, um, was was there like lo- Did you lose money the first time around? Like, I know you had the. Yeah, I lost. Had, I lost the yeah. first time around. I lost about fifteen grand. Fifteen grand. Yeah. All right. I the mean, first time around, but I profited. I profited a lot, but I started catching losses when the driver was getting accidents. Yeah. Okay. And, and then all that. But while the business was operating, mm-hmm. I was at a profit at eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. A okay. week. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I was I was profiting. So I was doing close to like what's that like two grand a week? Mm-hmm. I was doing close to like eight grand a week. Yeah. Okay. A month. A month. A month. A month. Yeah. A month profit. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I still have my job though. Yeah. 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 So now imagine making an extra eighty k a year mm-hmm. plus a job. Yeah. That's I mean you win it. No, to no, me no, you no. win. Yeah, no, no, you you you, you win it. Well, yeah. You win it cuz I mean it all depends on what see everybody want to be a millionaire but in reality you just want to live comfortable. That's you want to wake up one day and not worry about a bill. Mm-hmm. Not worry if you want to buy something because all a million dollars is gonna do is the same shit if you live in comfortable. Yeah, cuz if, if all your bills is if all your bills be higher. If all expenses. your bills is paid and tomorrow you wake up and you're going to swipe your card and book a flight and you ain't got to worry about if your bill going to get paid next week. I figure that's golden right there to me. That's success right there. That's success in its own. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's how I look at, at money. Like I, I don't chase money. I never chase money. Yeah. I just use money. You get what I'm saying? So we end up, she ended up telling me, are you serious about buying a truck? So I said, yeah, I'm fucking serious. But what I was going to do at this time Instead of me finding a driver or doing anything with the truck, I was going to lease my truck on to a company, which is another aspect of the game. So people will buy a truck and they'll find a driver or there's companies that will find a driver for you and you just give them your truck. You still got to take care of your maintenance. You still got to take care of everything. So it's like you renting the truck, your truck, yeah. to the company. I, I'm going to keep it to you like Bronx. In the yeah. Bronx form. You know how there's dudes that own cabs? Yeah. But they just put a a, a cab a driver in there and they let dispatch 
yeah. take care yeah, of everything. Exactly, yeah. It's the same fucking concept in trucking. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you would just buy a truck, put a driver in there, and let them handle everything. The only thing you'll be responsible for is the maintenance of your truck and paying the driver. Exactly, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They'll give the drivers a load. They'll even, you don't even have to talk to your driver. All you got to talk to your drivers on Friday when you're paying him or ask him about your maintenance. Yeah. Nice. They'll have an app and everything. You could download the same app on your phone and you could see what your driver's doing weekly. But you don't even have to commu- – you, you might not even talk to your driver for a whole month. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're just That's collecting cool. the check. Yeah. Every week you're collecting the check. And it, it goes down a little bit less than that. So, well, now that the rates are much higher than when I first got the trucks. Yeah. So you're still averaging like 1500 a week. Okay. So you got an extra fifteen hundred a week that just appears in your bank account. You ain't doing yeah, shit for no, it. That's See, that's nah, a yeah. passive income. That's you, you what you know, we. That's, that's, you know, that's what you're talking about. That passive you know income. You, you got it. You got that going into it. So I started that route. There's a little problem with that, and this is where I I came here to tell y'all niggas the truth. Yeah. The problem is, is that you lose total control of what your truck does. Whatever freight or load they give your driver, you have to deal with that. Yeah. So if your driver makes four hundred dollars today, four hundred dollars tomorrow, or five hundred, eight hundred, you have to deal with whatever freight. You have no control over the freight they give your truck. Mm. So at the end of the week, this week you might, you might net, you might gross three th- three grand, five grand. The following week you might gross twenty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's. that's and you still got to pay your driver the yeah. same money. The same money, mm-hmm. and you still got to do that. <laughs> yeah. So they have control of the freight, or how they distribute your freight to your truck. Wow. So I was doing that, and it it got to the point I found a great driver, and we was running it. We, we, I I ended up doing it, and all this was out of the word you said. I didn't fear. I never got scared of losing money, cause I. I I grew up in the Bronx, bro. I've been broke all my life. So it's like for yeah. me to go broke, it doesn't mean nothing because I could come back up. Yeah, no, and you and you and you already had your your job that's making you, you know. Yeah, what, so what, if, what, if anything, mm-hmm. I could just go back grinding extra hard. Exactly, take every yeah. overtime hour and all that. So I was cool with that. But then I wasn't cool was I'm sitting, I'm looking at my books. I'm keeping track of everything. I'm old school. I write everything down. I don't even yeah. use spreadsheets or none of that. Yeah. I be writing all my numbers down and I'm breaking even. Or I'm taking a loss. But I'm like, how? My driver's working every day. How? Mm. Like I told you, this is why I tell everybody when you get in trucking, maintenance might happen this week. Something might break down. Or it might be a bad week. No matter what, your driver got to get paid because he runs your whole operation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? So I end up calling this dude on the phone. And I was calling him about trucking. And he ended up being a mentor. So he was like, yo, why you want to get in this trucking game? I was like, oh, this is all I know. He was like, he was like, this trucking game will eat you up alive. You got to be ready for it. Like, are you ready for it? And I said, yeah, I'm ready for it. He was like, take my personal number down. Gave me my number. I was like, yo, you like uh, Ruby Tuesdays? I was like, yeah, I like Ruby Tuesdays. He's like, meet me in Ruby Tuesdays. Don't know this dude from a hole in the wall. He just fucked with me because he saw the passion that I had in trucking. Mm, yeah. He was like, you picking up the tab, meet me in Ruby Tuesdays. Went to Ruby Tuesdays. He gave me a whole breakdown. He was like, I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong. And then I'm going to tell you what you need to do. But it's up to you from here on in. If you don't do what I tell you, then it's, you're on your own. Yeah. So I was like, all right, what I need to do? He's like, you need to go on your own. You need to cut the middleman out. Yeah. You need to book your own freight. You need to book your own loads. You need to have total control of your business for your business to succeed. Yeah. So whether it fails or succeed, you have total control. And that's where it hit a light. So now, how do I get total control? And this is where... I started offering consultations to people. So if y'all need some consultation, I'm going to leave my number. They're going to post it on there. Yeah. I get one-on-ones. Um, and I help people go through the, some of the mistakes, help them prevent some of the mistakes I made, and I just talk them through it. And my first consultation is free, so I'm not charging y'all off the back. Um, can, can I ask you a question? Um, when you 
would you say that it's fair that you needed at least to learn what you know, like what you got from experience doing what you was doing before you got into doing it yourself? You think that was necessary? I think it's always necessary to go through trials and tribulations and learn, go through life wisdoms. Um, I'm always trying to. I'm always trying to learn. I'm always asking questions. Um, I don't. How you say it? I don't try to because from the from from. No matter what your position is, I'm gonna ask you a question because you might have knowledge of, that I don't know. I always ask everybody questions. I continue asking questions. Even my wife hated it sometimes. She said, you ask too much fucking questions. I said, yo, I ask questions. Like, even now when I talk to the dispatchers, some of these brokers, some of these freight forwarders, I asked a dude the other day, I spent an hour on him, how did he get his job? Because now he's my middleman. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, where you getting the work from? Like, I, I, already, cut my, I already cut the company so now I'm no longer working for a company. Exactly. I yeah. cut the company out. Now I'm the company. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting the work, the same work he's getting from these brokers, but where are these brokers getting the work from? So now yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you come through more obstacles because yeah. you're on your own now. So back to the dude. Yeah. And then if people, if people want to mess with my mentor, I can also give you my mentor's number. He yeah. also does consultation. He's a little bit more, more pricey than me, but. What you, like. Uh, there's a reason why I'm asking you the the questions, right? Um, we were talking about this earlier about uh, Jay Z. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that uh, you know, like is is uh Jay Z. He um he was the owner of 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 his own liquor company, and then he ended. He was like, you know what? Can I should I be a hundred on a hundred percent owner, or be fifty percent owner and have other companies who could distribute, you know, yeah, money? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like you you have to is. You have to understand like what it is, what's more profitable and what is better. So in Jay Z's case, it was better for him to become fifty percent because he has other distributors that that yeah, could yeah. help his business. Now he's making more money being at fifty percent than if he was at hundred percent. Yeah, because it's, one hundred yeah. percent of nothing. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah, but yeah, that, I yeah. mean that's that's he's selling a product. Yeah. So with me, I'm offering a service. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I know. And so I, so, I feel like if it worked the same way with the product and service, no. Well, I mean, it depends because on a product, you can scale much faster. Yeah. Where you're service based because service based, I have to. It depends on the, on the industry, but in the transportation industry, yeah, I could scale, but I'll have to have like 20, 30, 40 trucks. Got you know it, what I'm saying? It. Like, like it's, yeah. it's 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 a different avenue when you're in trucking. But what it is is what I tell people is if you do it right with three trucks, you can become a millionaire. Yeah. If you do it right. Exactly. Very easily. But like I also tell people is I don't want to Instagram this, but there's a lot of trials and tribulations you're going to face because people that don't have no knowledge of the industry, you're having a lot of more people that's coming into the trucking game that just see what they see on social media and they be like, let me buy a truck and make some money, which is cool. You can, and it's not impossible, but there's also things you got to face. There's a high turnover rate in drivers. So if you don't have a CDL and you're placing drivers in your truck, your driver might quit on you tomorrow. So now you have to go out and find another driver. How long is this driver going to stay with you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're, you're offering... Your business is, is basically being run on someone else's back. And you just have to make sure that you're, you're a good employer. You're showing value to your drivers. You're making sure your drivers get paid, even if you don't get paid. Um, there's a lot of things that go hand in hand with this trucking game that people don't see behind the scenes. And all they, all they hear is the end dollar amount. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah, yeah. But I'm not discouraging nobody. I'm telling everybody, if you could get your CDL and get in this game... You could be a one-man operation, and you could become a company just by yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an owner-operator for a company. Yeah. You could be yeah. your own company, your own op owner-operator, and work independently. Some people are like, well, why be an entrepreneurship to create myself a job? What I say with that, how I counter that argument is, what do you, the real value in all this, because everybody talks about fucking money which is cool. We all need money. We need money. But the real value is 
freedom. Yes. Freedom of choice, freedom of movement. I look at if you're creating an income that could give you the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want, and it doesn't have to be millions, but then if you wake up tomorrow and be like, I don't want to do shit and just stay in the bed and watch Netflix and order pizza and you could do that, yeah, yeah. that's the type of freedom I'm, I'm in search for. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I do all these businesses and try to make all these moves because I want my freedom back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And you know what I'm saying? And no, and 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 that's that's basically we secretly we kind of all want that. We want to be we want to be in a place where you know like yeah, you're working to make money, but you don't want to have to at some point in time. That's why you either invest yeah, when you're in a, yeah. you, if you're if you go in a path of doing a career and it's a good career, you know, like you want to get into investments so that you at least have that sense of I don't need to be I got a boy right now. Yeah. He got he got he's he got two trucks. Mm-hmm. He drives one, and he got one for his brother. They drive it together, right? This dude goes hard for like six months. The other six months, he's in fucking DR, bro. <laughs> yeah, that you makes know what I'm sense. saying? Yeah, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, 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 yeah, like, yeah. yo, I'm like, yo, and I'm, I be looking at my shit like, damn, what the fuck? Am I? I know I'm doing good. But sometimes you see other people's shit, but I don't try to look at nobody's competition, but just as a joke, nah. like, damn, what the fuck am I doing Bro, wrong? Like, this, I, I think this dude be chilling. I have an opinion, right? Like, I feel that, um, you know, this whole thing about people being envious of others, there's, there's such thing as being envious and it having to motivate you to actually want to to achieve that yeah so that exists as well like I, you know i just i don't like it when people be like you know like oh you know like oh you're just being envious or whatever like you could be envious but think in your mind like you know what this is good because i want to become yeah because envious yeah being envy don't mean you're jealous exactly yeah yeah being envy could be in a good way because you know what yo he's making a move i want to do exactly yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying so you could look you could be like damn that nigga, yo what the fuck yeah, let me man. figure out how to do what the fuck he doing. Yeah. And, and then sometimes with us, we 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 have pride, so we don't even want to ask the person what they doing. I like I said, I asked you, yo, bro, how the fuck y'all started this podcast? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna yeah, ask. Yeah. You no, know what I mean? No, yeah. But some people are like, yo, you know what? Fuck that shit. I'm gonna just figure out how to do this shit. I'm gonna, <laughs> yo, oh, I know it, it'll, be, like it'll be easier for me to <laughs> ask you, and you point me in the right direction, yeah, and man. I be like, what I tell people. And I and and this this truth this truth to my to the death of me. Yeah. Tell me what I need to do. Point me in the right direction. I'll do the legwork. Mm-hmm. You don't have to tell me every single thing. Just point me in the right direction, and tell me what I gotta do, and let me do the legwork, yeah. and I'll figure it out. And the same thing with my mentor. My mentor told me that line. He was like, "For you to really make money in this game, you gotta be your own company. Yeah. You're gonna have to do these steps." And he just shouted out names. And processes. So I was like, I bet. I wrote all that shit down. I went home that night. I Googled everything that motherfucker said. Everything. Yeah, not because we, he have, didn't we have tell Google now too. Yeah. It's in our fucking, you could do it it's on the free. phone in your car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This dude charges $3,000 for a sit down. Wow. 3000 for That's one crazy. sit down, yeah. right? But he, he's, he's done build. He has a reputation. He's built million dollar companies. He saw me as a young minority. He's an old school black cat. And he saw I had a little passion, but he knew I didn't have that type of bread to pay for him. Mm-hmm. He gave me a sit down. He told me I pay for his lunch. He just shouted out shit. Like how we just having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I came with a notebook. I'm just writing down names. U-I-A, D-O-T, uh, trucking this, truck insurance, D-O-T insurance. I'm just writing shit down that he's telling me. Yeah. Like, okay. And I'm just writing it like in scribble. When I went home, I Googled all that. All that. Some of the shit I already knew because yeah, I've been yeah. in the industry. Exactly, I've yeah. been a truck driver for, you know, for which 18 is the, years. Which is the best thing when, you, when you're when you doing something and you see like, like oh, you see similarities. Like, okay, yeah, this yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And then you add this to it. I'm like, okay, you know, this makes sense. So yeah. that's why it is, it, it is, it is, it is good, man. Um. I do want to let you know, like, um, you know, like we, yeah, we talked, we talked a lot here, man. You gave a lot of knowledge today. Yeah. And I wanna, um, 
I do want to invite you back. I don't, yeah, if you're willing yeah, yeah. to come in. What I come back is yeah. I give a little bit more people in depth concept. Like yeah, we, yeah. we really just talked about life and entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't really get into into the trucking game. And no, and we definitely, we definitely will, man. Because it, 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 I think this is this is a this is a huge market. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's it, a seven hundred billion dollar industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna keep it real brief because we about to cut off. For all those that want to get in trucking, I say mm-hmm. get into it. Because put like this, even if you have, if you could come in the game right now and buy 20 trucks, you're not putting no dent in the industry. Like, this is a $700 billion industry. And I mean, that's like, you owning trucks, you could own 100 trucks. You probably don't even own a percentage share of the industry. You probably own 0.0001% of the yeah. industry. Mm-hmm. So it's an industry where everybody could make money. You can't be soft-hearted with it. You just got to go with the trials and tribulations. But in a nutshell, like what my company does in a week, we probably gross in about 30, 40 grand a week. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, and I'm just doing that with a four-truck operation. You know what I mean? That's dope. So... It's possible, it's doable. You just have to have the will and tenacity to do it. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all want to hit me up, I'll give y'all the full breakdown. Exactly. No, I definitely and gonna put your link. Yeah. And no, and you just gotta. And, I got and, a website. If you guys want to log yeah. on to my website, ah. www.craigstransports.com. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And that's what I was gonna say. Um, to end the note, like, um, what's most important about all of that is just you need the knowledge. Yes. So, how do you get the knowledge? You get it through people who who've, who've gone through it. Yeah. And, I I give and, you free yeah. knowledge. I'm not charge. I'm charging you if you want me to help you build your trucking company. Mm-hmm. I help you go it from from top to the bottom. Um, I'm charging way much cheaper than my mentor. Because <laughs> 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 uh, I know people ain't really got it out here, especially if you're a brand new business owner. Yeah. He gave me the game for free, but my time is money because I'm really busy, so I can't really do it for free. But um, I'm willing to help. If you just want to give me a call, it's 848-308-0085. I repeat go. that again, 848-308-0085. If you just want to just have a talk, I'm willing to talk. I don't charge the talk. And I mean, if you're already in the process and you're kind of stuck and trying to figure out what you need to do, I'm also doing dispatching. Um, but I, my, we focus on container work, support work. We don't really do dry vans, flat vans, and all that. We we focus on the ports. Okay. So if you guys are interested in the ports and want to get in the ports, it's a process too. It's a lot of yellow tape, but I help you get through the yellow tape. And there's money to be made. I mean, um, I booked the load. I booked the load today, before I even came here. Mm. The load paid sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. That's. Pretty I cool. mean, at the end of the day, after all expenses, I'm walking away with seven fifty, and I'm here talking to you guys on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, this is, yeah. This keep is, giving this that knowledge in part. You know what I'm saying? Man. I just yeah, made yeah. $750 just to come see you guys. I mean, I had another load, too. Yesterday, the driver went to um, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. I made $1,700 off that load. Okay. And I was sleeping in my bed. I didn't wake up till like 12. I mean, but I have a process. I mean, I'm bragging a little bit. I mean, I have a partner, um, which is my wife. She does most of the uh, day-to-day operations. It allowed us for her to quit her job and become the full-time operations manager. That's awesome. So That's awesome. It's, 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 it's a very great business. Um, eventually, will I ever walk away from my job? My job is so great. I probably will um, in the next five years. Maybe yes. I will. We have we, There's something that we always say, and it comes from, from our second episode, like, what you want to do is you want to work your nine to five because that's what's gonna hold your all your needs. But uh, but eventually you want to work on your five to nine to yeah. to, to establish yeah. your business yeah. Yeah. so that your nine to five can eventually become your twenty four hours. Yeah. So that's yeah. basically uh, that's what, what you're doing. Yeah. And yeah. You're doing In other step and you showing sample to yeah, our yeah. listeners. Yeah. And you're doing this. Yeah. So. This is yo. This was an awesome episode, man. Um, you know, like uh. What I want to do is, like I said, I want to bring you back. There's this other things I want to talk about, like um, your weight loss journey, oh, which is yeah, something that, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. that I'm actually interested in listening. And I, yeah, I, have, yeah. I have some, like I have a story to say about, about, about this gentleman right here, man. It, it, we, we, um, we have, like, we've gone to, like, what, two trips? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it, so, and, like, you're so, like, sociable. Like, you know, like, like when, when you are, when we go out and you're, like, the, the, 
center of attention in a sense, yeah. right? Because and like, I don't you even make try the to be. No, I know it, it comes <laughs> naturally, bro. So and when I when I talked to you about you know the podcast, you was like you was all all on board. You was like, yeah, this is awesome. Like let's yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, like I'm very happy that you came in, man. Like and and like I said, we have other things to talk about. I do. I'm trying to get um. My cousin in, cause yeah. you know, like she's responsible for for the trips that 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 we we end up going to. Um, you well, I mean, someone, maybe yeah. maybe we could talk about. I got another business. If I'm starting, I just started it actually, uh, the daycare business. Oh, oh yeah, so, yeah. I started, <laughs> yeah. I started, I started like a daycare. three episode episode with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 we yeah, yeah, no, no, we definitely no, we, are. We're gonna bring you back to so have more episodes. Yeah, episode yeah. yeah, because there's so many things and now they're My wife does the um, she had did the whole creek cut business. You see how everybody doing the pre-cut, the pre-cut, the yeah. cricket, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The design. She could talk about that. Like, we all about, my son is doing a fashion business, mm. him and his friends. We we all about, the thing is, I want you to work and get a job. Yeah. Because you never know with these businesses. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. what I tell people is try to build a foundation, but then also try to find something you like to do. And everything we do is a fucking business, bro. Not nah, that's, that's everything not it, we yeah. do. Everything you like, there's something you like to do. You could turn that into a business, and I yeah, tell that man. to my kids all the time. Yo, there's something you like to do, and it's a business right now. Exactly. Yeah, man. it's so, a business. Yeah. So we 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 gonna end it in that. No, guys, yo, if you could turn your lifestyle into a business, do it. You know what I'm saying, do, do it, it. All right. Do it. So yo, thank you for coming in, bro. I right, appreciate all right? you guys. All well, right, man. You, so we always say, um, we all, we always put new episodes on Monday and the video on YouTube on Friday. And like, you want to end this? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, guys, hey, I want you all to level up to success. And, you know, I just want to give you guys uh, uh, much love to you guys. And, you know, deuces. All right. Peace. All right.